Hi friends, today we're doing Unit 9 Lesson 3, Columbus and the Conquistadors. We're going to start by going over the key vocabulary words you'll be hearing in today's reading. Our first word is conquering, taking control of by using force or great effort. Our second word is conquistadors, the Spanish word for conquerors, travelers, soldiers, and explorers from Spain who traveled to North, Central, and South America to look for wealth, conquer the native peoples, and gain control of land. Immune means protected from disease. Quantities, amounts or numbers of something. Raided means attacked in a sudden and unexpected way, often to steal goods. Recruiting means persuading someone to become a new member of a group or organization. And trek is a difficult journey or trip. We are now going to move into today's reading. Christopher Columbus made four voyages to the West Indies, convinced he had reached the East Indies in Asia. The voyage most people know about is the first one, the voyage when Columbus landed in the West Indies. In some ways, Columbus's second voyage was even more important. If you want to understand what happened in the Americas with European exploration over the following hundred years or so after Columbus, it helps to know something about his second voyage. When Columbus returned to Europe after his first transatlantic voyage, he was greeted as a hero. Word of his expedition spread rapidly in Spain and throughout Europe. The report he sent to King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella of Spain was printed in large quantities or amounts using the recent invention of the printing press. Thousands of Europeans read Columbus's report and others heard the reports read aloud. Soon everybody was talking about Columbus and his discoveries. Some people were not sure if he had really sailed to Asia as he claimed, but they were sure he had found something new and exciting. Columbus was honored by King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. He was named Admiral of the Ocean Sea, and as he had hoped, he was given ships and money for a second voyage. The second voyage was a much, much bigger operation than the first voyage. Columbus had a fleet of three ships and about 100 men for his first voyage. On the second voyage, he had a fleet of 17 ships and more than 1,000 men. When he was recruiting sailors for his first voyage, Columbus had a hard time finding sailors who were willing to sail west into uncharted waters. When he was recruiting men for his second voyage, he had so many eager, interested sailors that he had to turn many of them away. The ships of the second voyage left Spain in September of 1493. After a stop in the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa, Columbus and his men sailed west. They sighted land in early November. Columbus explored the coast of several islands, but he was eager to get back to the fort he and 39 of his crew members had built on Hispaniola on his first voyage. He hoped that in his absence, the men had left behind, the men he had left behind would have developed peaceful trading relationships with the Taino and that they would have collected a lot of gold. What Columbus actually found was quite different. The fort had been burned to the ground, the Spaniards he had left on the island had been killed, and there was no great hoard of collected gold. Instead of trading peacefully with the Taino of Hispaniola, the Spaniards had treated them cruelly. The Europeans had raided their villages and had taken many people as slaves. They had taken gold wherever they could find it. After a while, the Taino fought back, attacked the fort, and killed the Spaniards. Columbus decided to build another fort on Hispaniola and named it Isabella after the Queen of Spain. He left his brother Diego in charge of it and urged him to find the gold that Columbus felt sure was on the island. Diego and his men found some gold, but not as much as Columbus had led the king and queen to think was on the island. By 1495, Columbus, Columbus's men had become unhappy and Columbus grew anxious. It became clear to his men that there was much less gold than Columbus had exaggerated in his report. They felt that Columbus had lied to them. Some of them had already sailed back to Spain to complain about Columbus's exaggerations in leadership. Meanwhile, Columbus continued to look for gold, using cruel methods to get as much gold as he could. He made laws that enslaved and punished the natives if they didn't collect enough gold for the Spaniards. What made the laws even more cruel was the fact that Hispaniola had only a little gold. There was no way the enslaved native people could supply the amount of gold Columbus demanded. As if this weren't bad enough, many of the Taino became infected with diseases to which many of the Spanish had become immune. The Taino and Hisp on Hispaniola had never been exposed to the types of germs the Spaniards carried in their bodies. Through interacting with the Spaniards, the natives came in contact with germs that their bodies could not fight. 
Over the next several years, many of the Taino became sick and hundreds of thousands of them died of diseases, the most common of which was smallpox. Before Columbus's voyage, the Taino had a population of around 2 million. Between disease and Spanish conquest, during the, follow during the years following the arrival of Columbus and his men, the Taino only numbered a few thousand. By, by 1496, it was clear that there was no more gold to be found on Hispaniola. Columbus decided to make a new law that said that the native people had to help develop large farms called plantations and work as slaves for the Spanish. In just a few years, the Spanish were firmly in control of the island of Hispaniola. After that point, they began to spread out, exploring and conquering other nearby islands in the Caribbean. The many men who led these voyages of exploration and conquest were known as conquistadors, the Spanish word for conquerors. These conquistadors were travelers, soldiers, and explorers from Spain who traveled to North, Central, and South America to look for wealth, conquer the native peoples, and gain control of land. They came to the Americas to find the same thing Columbus had been looking for in unexplored parts of America, gold, spices, land, slaves, fame, and power. By the year 1542, 50 years after the first voyage of Christopher Columbus, many Spanish conquistadors had explored and conquered most of South America, all of Central America, and a significant part of North America. Christopher Columbus died believing he had reached the islands of the East Indies and Asia, known at that time just as the Indies. When the Spanish realized this mistake, it was decided to, it was decided to name the area where Columbus had landed, the West Indies, and the Spice Islands in Asia that he had tried to reach, the East Indies. What happened in those 50 years after Columbus's first voyage? First, a conquistador named Juan Ponce de Leon conquered the island of Puerto Rico to the, land, to the east of the island of Hispaniola. At about the same time, another conquistador by the name of Diego Velazquez subdued the native people on the island of Cuba, an island to the west of Hispaniola. Soon the Spanish began to extend their control beyond the islands of the Caribbean Sea. They began to explore and conquer the mainland of North and South America. In 1513, Ponce de Leon explored the coast of Florida and claimed it for Spain. In the very same year, Vasco Nunez de Balboa fought his way through the jungles of Panama and became the first Spaniard to reach the Pacific Ocean. A few years later, in 1519, Hernan Cortes led a Spanish army into Mexico. He ordered that the fleet of ships be burned when he and his crew landed so that everyone would understand there was no turning back. He marched his army inland and eventually conquered the mighty Aztec Empire and its king, Moctezuma II. The conquistador Francisco Pizarro led his men deep into South America and by 1532 had conquered the other great empire of the Americas, the Inca Empire in Peru. The defeat of this great empire was due in large part to disease because the natives had no immunity to the diseases the Europeans brought with them. Many, many natives became sick and or died of these diseases after coming into contact with the Europeans. After helping Pizarro conquer the Inca Empire, the conquistador Hernando de Soto turned his attention to North America. He landed his troops on the west coast of Florida and led them on a long trek through what is now the southeastern part of the United States. At about the same time, Francisco Vasquez de Coronado led an army of Spaniards north from Mexico into what is now the southwestern United States, hoping to find the cities of gold he had heard about. In the following read-alouds, you will learn about the journeys of these conquistadors and other explorers and hear about their bold ideas, their voyages, their struggles in search of gold, and their interactions with the Native Americans. You may now move on to Unit 9, Lesson 3, Google Form.